Hey, what's happening? I'm Scott, this is Motivated by Mountains, and today we're gonna to talk about what I think is the absolute best choice for a budget backpacking tent. Okay, so real quick, I'm gonna jump through the specs just to go ahead and get that out of the way, and then Stay tuned to the end of the video. I'm gonna share some tips and some things that I've learned using the shelter over the last few years to make sure you get the proper pitch, get it set up quickly, and then a few things that do need to be tweaked on the shelter just to make sure that everything's comfortable and easy. Now this is a tent that I've been using for several years. I've used it in tons of different conditions. I've slept in it by myself. I've slept in it with my son, my dog. Um, it's technically a one person tent but there's definitely enough room in it to fit uh, another person as long as you uh, know that person really well or you feel really comfortable being close. All right, so I'm gonna lay back and I'll show you the, um, the headroom in this tent. So I'm on a two inch pad, I've got a pillow fully inflated and I'm wearing this ball cap. So it should give you a pretty good idea of how much room you actually have. There we go, let's, let's check my feet just to make sure that I'm good on both ends. All right, plenty of room with the feet. The interior floor space is 48 inches wide at the widest point by 90 inches long. So by comparison, that's the same floor length as the Z-Pax duplex. And the interior height is 48 inches. Packability of the shelter. So it comes with a Sil Poly stuff sack. If you actually fluff it out, that's how long this stuff sack is. It is plenty big to be able to stuff the tent inside of very easily, which is really great when your fingers are cold. There we go. That's pretty damn small. The weight of the shelter is 26 ounces, which I think is very respectable. That's a, that's a pretty damn lightweight shelter, especially for $200. Um, I think Really, to get any lighter than that and still have an integrated bathtub floor, you would have to go to a Dyneema shelter and the price tag is gonna jump way up. All right, so the Lunar Solo is made out of a silicone coated polyester. A lot of shelters, especially single wall shelters, are still nylon shelters and they have a tendency to sag and to lose tension once they absorb a little bit of moisture, whereas the silicone coated polyester has less tendency to sag. The canopy is made of a 20D material and the floor is made of a 40D weaved material. And I've had no issues as far as durability with the floor and I never, I have never used a ground sheet of any sort. Okay, setting up this shelter can be a little bit tricky, but if you know the order and the way to go about doing it, it's actually very simple. You just have to make sure and do it the same way every time and you will get a perfect pitch. So a couple of tips, first and foremost, you wanna have your doors unzipped and not latched. You want them just free flowing in the breeze. And then um, you are gonna to wanna to go ahead, like I said, and set your trekking pole or whatever you're gonna support the tent with at 51 inches. And you'll need two small sticks to tie out the head and foot end of the tent. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, lay your shelter out on the ground, make sure you've got the door oriented um, where you're going to be able to get in and out of the door. If you're expecting any severe wind that night, I would recommend that you orient the rear of the shelter into the wind, maybe at a slight angle, and you should be good to go. So when you start staking out the shelter, you're going to stake out the rear corners first, and you're going to stake these out at a 45 degree angle. Then you're going to move around to the front of the shelter and you're gonna set your pole into the cup in the top of the shelter and then you're gonna stake out the main guideline, making sure to get proper tension and lining that up in the center of the rear stakes so that you form a triangle. Then you're gonna to move to the front two corners. You're gonna do the same thing, stake out these corners at a 45 degree angle and then you're gonna move around to the back of the shelter now you're gonna to wanna to pull the back tie out as straight and centered with the front as you can, and then adjust the tension accordingly. At this point, you can move back around to the front and go ahead and attach your doors and zip everything up. You should have 
pretty good tension on the doors. If you don't, you can go around and adjust everything with the webbing. All right, so I think this is the most important part of setting up the Lunar Solo or any shelter of this type. You want to make sure that you do not pull your head and foot tie outs straight to the ground. That will not give you any additional head or foot room. So those two sticks that I mentioned before, you want to take these sticks and you want to wrap those up in the cord so that you're pulling those guidelines up and out and then stake to the ground. That way you're going to increase that head and foot room and you'll be good to go. All right, so this is a single wall shelter. Obviously, at some point you are going to have issues with condensation. So a few things that I have done, a few things I've learned um, sleeping in single wall shelters or any shelter really um, to kind of deal with condensation. Um, first thing you're going to do is try and camp in an area that is going to limit the possibility of condensation. So you want to avoid camping next to streams or any type of open water. You also want to avoid um, camping down low. So if you're in between two ridges, you don't want to be at the very bottom because that's where all the cold, damp air is going to settle and you're definitely going to have more of a chance for condensation. You also want to try and be in an area where there's a little bit of uh, air movement, some breeze. That way you can try and um, get some air flowing through your tent, through your shelter, and that'll help also. Now, two things that I like to use to kind of deal with condensation when it does happen inside of my tent. Uh, first thing is I like to use a rain jacket over my foot box of my sleeping bag or quilt, whichever one you use. It's pretty simple. You just zip up your rain jacket and you just throw it right over the foot end of your bag or quilt. Obviously, you want to try and use a rain jacket that is fairly breathable, but I find unless it's really hot or you have miscalculated your insulation, you've got a bag or a quilt that's too warm, you're probably going to be fine. Another thing I like to use is a chamois, just a small piece of car chamois. Um, works really, really well. All you need to do is just wipe that thing on the inside of the walls of your tent when they do have condensation. You can even tap the, uh, the fly or the top of your shelter and that bits of condensation will fall to the floor. Obviously you want to do this after you've moved everything out of your shelter. But it'll fall to the floor and then you can just wipe it up real quick with your chamois, hit the sides, and you're done. Okay, so when the shelter does absorb some moisture or um, it starts to sag, so first and foremost, super easy. Instead of jumping out of your shelter and going all the way around and resetting all of your tie outs and pulling everything and getting more tension, one thing that definitely works with the Lunar Solo and also works with a lot of other shelters is just to raise your trekking pole slightly. Just pop that thing up a little bit and when you raise it and pull all the tie outs will tension up again and you'll be good to go. Okay, so the doors on the Lunar Solo, the door hook, I guess is what I'm going to call it. There's some very small webbing loops that you're supposed to hook this, this hook into and it's very difficult, especially when you have cold fingers or gloves, but there's an easy fix. All you need to do is take a couple of pieces of cordage tie yourself a couple of loops, put them through that webbing loop, and that will be much easier to put onto that hook. So the space inside is great, the weight is great, the durability seems to be great. Um, I've had no issues there. Um, I've had it in some hellacious storms and wind and it's held up really well. Um, yeah, I just, I can't really think of anything else. Um, Nothing negative about this shelter, it's great. And for 200 bucks, man, it is uh, definitely a shelter you should check out. So I hope that this information was helpful um, and maybe it'll make you uh, or help you make a decision on um, a budget or a shelter around that price range. So here's what I'd like you guys to do. I would love to know what, um, what budget backpacking shelters do you guys recommend, do you have experience with, if you could put all that information in the comments, that would be great. And then if you have experience with this shelter, with the Lunar Solo, and there's something I missed, also throw that in the comments. That would be killer. That way we can all read the comments and kind of learn from each other. That'd be great. So I think that is it. And uh, yeah, so if you like the video, hit the like button. 
If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. We've got lots more videos coming, tons of stuff to talk about and show you guys. So definitely subscribe to the channel. Um, if you want to follow along on Instagram, you can do that too. That is at motivated by mountains. So until next time, I'm Scott. See you again soon.